If you are ready to learn how to cut layers, curl a unit, and style it, well, you came to the right channel because I'm about to teach you today. I can see you over there just chilling with your friends. I can't believe you're by yourself. You should be here with me, my baby. What's up guys? Welcome and welcome back to my channel. I am Casey and I am here again. I know it's been a long time since I showed you guys a tutorial, but I am here and I pray to God that I'm here to stay this time because life has been lifing. Anyways, let's get right into this tutorial. So today we have a 5x5. I think this unit is 16 inches. It might be 18. This is all I had at the, at the moment when I decided to do this video um to style so i do have longer styling videos on my channel but anyhow this is how you style a shorter unit so this is about 16 inches so i'm starting with flattening the top with the hot comb so this step is very important you guys because this is a part of like actually getting a flat base which is necessary especially when you're you, um, doing it on um, a client's head or you want it to just look as natural as possible so what you do see me doing is I took my flat iron, my hot comb rather, and I'm parting sections at the front and I'm taking my hot comb and then I'm flattening down each section that I have parted. If you do it in one go, it will not get as flat as if you take your time and part through um, in sections and then flat iron it down. Use your wax stick and flat iron it down just like how you see me doing it. I've already found that I'm going to be doing a middle part, so I am just going to do the same thing I just did on the other side of my middle part. So the products I'll be using today is this hot comb. This is an Andis brand hot comb. Um, this is a one, one and a half inch barrel curler. The bigger your curler, the looser the curls. The smaller your curler, the tighter the curls. That is it. That's so if you want a bit tighter curls, then you can use a smaller curler, like maybe one and one fourth instead of a one and a half. You also need a heat protecting, that orange bottle is heat protecting, and wax, wax sticks, though, and some clips. You'll need some pin clips and you'll need some grabber clips to hold the hair. You also need a pair of shears as well. So let's begin. So I'm starting with going back in with a hot comb and I'm slightly pulling the hair forward as I'm hot combing down because I want the front curls to fall like framing her face not necessarily a curtain but kind of nearer to her face almost like a curtain curtain bang so i part out about one inch from um her bang area like where the bangs would lay if i was to do full bangs because that's how i'm going to start cutting so i'm going to start cutting about two inches down from her chin that will be like my map to use for cutting the rest and you'll see in a moment so you are cutting down in a diagonal so from where her chin starts that's going to be her highest point and down to her their collarbone or as long as the hair gets that's going to be the longest point so you just go down in like a diagonal down and that's how you cut the bangs so you part out the section on the other side and do the same exact thing so i'm just showing you the the size of the part and you just use use the other side as a map and do the same thing on that side if it is not even you can just go ahead and even it out but on both sides it should look in the middle of the person's face it looks like a downward v like an upside down v um and right now mine isn't sh um straight like it's not even on both sides like the bang area but i will even that out later so from here you are going to continue layering so you're going to take another section from the hair the front of the hair you're going to put the first section together and then you're going to pull it slightly and when the hair starts falling out from your hand, when it stops falling out from your hand, that's where you'll continue cutting from that point. You'll take the scissors and go down even further. Okay, and that's how you cut layers. So I'm going to continue doing that. So I'm going to make part of another section. I'm going to grab all the hair again in my hand. And then I'm going to I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to sl slightly let my hand fall, let the hair fall. And where the hair stops falling is where there's still too much length so you cut you start the layers again from exactly where the hair stops falling and then i'm going to part it again this this is like right behind the client's ear and i'm going to do the exact same thing again wherever it stops falling that's where i'll start cutting from and that's how you cut the front layers of the unit 
I have a bit of a cold, so I apologize if I sound a little bit congested or if I keep like snorting or something. My apologies in advance because I just really needed to get this voiceover done and so that we can move on. So anyhow, this portion right here is behind her ear. As you can see, it's behind her ear. So this, you'll be cutting a little bit differently um, than the front. So the, you take your, it's kind of like you're still cutting in a diagonal except um, you're basically cutting down, like downwards. You're basically cutting the same exact way, but you're parting out small sections and you're just taking some hair from the top and cutting down. You are not removing length from the hair. You're just adding dimension into the hair. And di adding dimension means basically you're just adding some layers. So where I'm cutting from, as you can see, like right here, I'm cutting from the top so that when I curl, there's going to be like a curl kind of at the top there and at the bottom, like the curl is going to go down in some layers. So that's what you see me. There's other ways to cut layers into the back of the unit. This, I think, is just the easiest and quickest way for, especially for beginners to do, and it works every time. Typically, when I do layer um, cutting and layer videos, I don't layer the back. I don't show you guys how to layer the back. So this video, I want to make sure you guys see how to layer the back. Do not be afraid to cut layers into your back. Yes, you can still straighten your wig and wear it straight. However, that depends depending on how much layers you cut because the the more, more, more layers you cut, the harder it'll be to blend when you straighten it. So I would suggest just leaving it as a body wave, curly wig and just wearing it curly at all times. Or if you'd like to have a versatile unit, you just don't cut layers in the back because you don't necessarily have to cut layers in the back but cutting layers in the back of the unit as well as the front will give it more body more dimension and the curls will last longer when even when they fall they will still have that shape so all i'm doing as you can see i'm just parting with my finger taking some hair and then cutting downwards so again i'm not cutting off any length because the most of the cutting that's happening is in the in the top of the hair and going down i'm leaving all the length at the bottom so the length of the hair will still be intact so i think that's a misconception when people think of cutting you're cutting length off but not necessarily unless the client wants it to be a little bit shorter um you do even the ends out i do even the ends out so the ends are even but that's not even half an inch it's way less than that because stringy ends of a unit is not cute and i'll show you guys how i do that as well so as you saw, I'm just basically repeating the same steps on both sides. Um, exactly how I cut the front on the that um, on the right side, I did the same thing to the left side. Now I'm just going to even out um, with my scissors the front part of the bang to make sure they they are the same length. Now guys, it's important to know that when you are getting ready to style, meaning curl um, the unit, the unit has to have most of the kinks out of it. So if you just freshly wash your hair and let it dry, do you see the kinks in the hair? You want to either blow it out, dry it, blow dry it out with on high heat to, to get it a little bit straighter, or you could take your hot comb and just hot comb it down. Now I'm just taking my shears and I am cutting the ends just so that there's any little stringy ends that is not on the unit. So I'm barely even, I'm literally barely even cutting anything off. Maybe like a millimeter, two millimeters of hair or so. Nothing, nothing more than a half an inch. Unless um, I know that the client would want some heavy, heavy layers in their hair and doesn't mind the snipping. So now I'm parting this hair in four sections. I separate the two sections in the front as the bang area and I separate the back section in two sections as well. This is just the easiest way to curl in my opinion. I feel like any styling I do, I always section the hair in four before I style. Um, I've, it's just easier for me. So for this tutorial today, the difference is I am starting the curls in the front. And the reason I'm starting to curl in the front is because curls need time to cool down. And because the front of your hair is the most important Part, I want to make sure that the front curls are fully cooled down um, before I take them out and style it. So I'm spraying some heat protectant on the hair. Um, that one I use is Beyond the Zone. It smells really nice. And then I'm going to take my flat iron and I'm going to curl 
the tail of the curl is going to go towards the face of the client. Um, that's how I do it on the side. So the face, the tail of the curl, the, meaning the end part of the curl, is going to be curled in the flat barrel facing the client's face, not behind. Okay, and then it falls. It's going to, when it is time to take it down, it will fall exactly the way I want it to fall. So I'm just going to go down um, the front of the hair. I don't catch more than maybe one inch. This curler is bigger, so it can it can um, have, you can put more hair in it than a smaller curl curler because it's bigger, right? So <clears throat> I was able to get a little bit more hair in it than um, if I was to use a smaller curler. So again, the, you, f you put it around the barrel, you flip it one time, just so that there's no kinks, but you always bring the hair to the left instead of the right, okay? And this, it, this is um, how I do it on both sides. I find it just easier if you do the same thing on both sides as opposed to, I know you, there, um, you could do it another way, but I think this is the easiest way to do it instead of like having to hold it two different ways on both sides because I know some stylists do that um, but I think this is the easiest way to teach after every curl make sure that you kind of just hold it in your hand to cool down a little bit because it's super hot honestly it's really hot I would suggest if you're not used to that use gloves my hands are probably leather, leather by now because I've been burnt a quadrillion times um, so I just use my hand but it is hair holds carries heat it holds heat for a good period of time so you might you can burn yourself if you're not careful so please be careful wear a heat glove if you need if necessary okay so i um and then you pin it because we need these curls to hold so you always pin your curls if you want them to last the longest you need to pin them okay that's what you call pin curls so i want to show you guys a little bit more closely so you put the hair in the flatter, um, in the curler, and you simultaneously twist it for the first curl, and then you keep twisting the hair around it. You're gonna need both your hands to do this. So every time you twist the hair around, you use the other hand and you kind of just do a twisting motion. And that's how you use a curler. You see how my hand is on the clasp of the curler while you open it? That's because I'm using it to oh, push it down a little, um, sorry, to open it a little bit because you're not going to be able to pull your curl down if you don't kind of loosen it by flicking it, lightly flicking it so it it loosens. You understand what I'm saying? I hope that makes sense. So for the top part, I'm actually going to split the top portion of the curl into two curls into two um, parts because I want two pieces to be curled there because it's too thick it's too big um, so I'm gonna cut it in half in the front there like that and I'm gonna curl that piece forward and I'm gonna curl that piece as well you are still curling the same way it's just that you are just doing this front part in two sections instead of one um, Essentially, the sec, the sec, the section, sorry, the section I did before this one could have been two as well because it's kind of, it's kind of um, wide. But I just, it's just you can always adjust. I can show, uh, when I am taking down the pins, I will adjust. Me. <clears throat> I will, can adjust the curls if I feel to, um, and I'll show you guys that when I am taking down the pins and showing you guys how to mold the hair in place and style it, like you know, because I know the girls be teaching y'all how to curl for the most part but they're not teaching you guys how to take down the pins and install the curls in place because that is another effort that they don't really show and I think it's really important to know so that you know how to make the curls fall in the way that they're supposed to frame your face so I'll be showing you guys that today yay so for this area right here this area the bang area that we started with when we started cutting the layers in this area you requires you to curl towards the front of your client's face so you have to be standing in front of your client to do this portion however I can't stand in front of um, my client <laughs> my mannequin because that would be blocking you guys view so I am showing you as best as possible um, how to do it without blocking the view too much so it, I'll have a better 
uh, visual of it on the other side so you guys can see but for the most part you just want to make sure you're in front of the client and curling towards like you know to basically curling towards you towards yourself I realized that I had my curler set too high. It was on 400 Celsius uh, Fahrenheit when it should be on 350 Fahrenheit because 400 is too high. This curler does go up to 450, um, so it does pack a lot of heat, which is why I like it. Um, and so you don't need it to be as high that high. So 350 Fahrenheit is fine for an ion curler. You can find the Beyond the Zone um, heat protecting spray in the orange bottle that I use and the curler at Sally's if you guys have a Sally's in your area. Some places, I live in Canada, but some places may have it in like their local beauty supply store. I'm not sure, Our, mine doesn't. Um, so those are the where I usually get my hot tools from. I get them at Sally's. So onto the next side, you gotta make sure that when you're parting, the parts are clean, meaning that you can either see the track, um, like the one, the track, the top track that you decide to use like depending on how much tracks how much thickness you want the curl to have you just got to make sure that the track is even like it's one track and it's not there's not hair in between the part and things like that like you can clear see clearly see the track and for this side you do the same thing you you take the curl and you curl it with the fa the tail side facing outwards and I'll show you again um, just so you can see the way I'm curling it. So you take it, the tail is the end of the hair, and I spray it with the got to be heat protectant. And then I take the curler and I'm turning, I mean taking the tail and I'm turning it outwards. Like I'm, the tail always curls towards me. And that's because that's how I want it to fall. And then I take the curler out and then I make it cool down a little bit and then I pin it. So same thing on this side, I split the last row in two pieces because it would be too wide. I don't want such a wide curl at the top. Like I want the curl to kind of just make sure that the curl is a full curl. Cause when you use too much of a wide part, especially up here, the curl doesn't sit the way that you want to. So always part the top in two. This is also a better angle of me showing you guys that I'm using the curler in the front like I'm curling it towards the front of the of like towards me like I would be standing in front of the client and I'm curling towards me that's how you curl the front here if you want it to lay the way that um, you saw in the thumbnail and I'll also be showing you guys how to do that so on to the back so guys I already previously parted the back in two so I'm just even out the two parts just so it's easier for me and I use those as my guidelines just to make sure that the curls are pro proportioned on both sides evenly so I grab my first section of hair I part that out and then I'm gonna clip away the rest of the hair so it's out of my way and that it doesn't get stuck into the curler never forget to use your heat protecting spray this one has a little bit of sheen in it so it's great to use just for a little bit of shine and as you can see, I'm curling the hair towards the left side. So the tail end is facing towards the left side of the unit. But then when I pull the curl out, I am going to pull towards the right. Some units have more hair on them than this one does. So you want to make sure that you part. If the section looks too wide, it's okay to part it in two pieces. It doesn't have to be one curl. It can be two pieces just so long as you use your discretion to see like, oh, is this curl gonna be too, is this part too too wide or too thick? Then you just half it and then do it in sections, that's all. Make sure when you're curling, you don't let go too soon. You wanna make sure that very tip of the curl is fully curled. Like so even when you curl it all the way through, hold it for another couple seconds before you and then twist it one more time to make sure all the hair is out of it and then pull it through. Just to make sure like it's curled all the way to the ends because if the hair is not curled all the way to the ends, it will not stay curled and it won't st look nice either. So I'm just gonna repeat the same steps on this whole, whole side. So I'll just allow you guys to watch this whole side and then when I get to the next side, then I'll show you guys how to, I curled the other, the opposite side of the unit, which would be the, the left side.
So onto this side. So I curled this side a little bit different and I'll show you guys what I do on this side. So it's all like in the motion flick of the wrist <laughs> in a sense. So I hold the iron upside down and then I grab the hair and I flip it in the iron in the direction to the right. So the tail is going to the right and I flip the iron. So basically I'm holding the iron down and then I'm going right when I curl it. I'm, I'm twisting my arms right when I curl. Because I want that, um, I want the curl to kind of fall the opposite way on this side. I'm gonna show you guys again. So again, this is what I mean by make sure the part's clean. See how you can see the track? Yeah, like that. Just make sure there's no hair covering the track because you want to make sure the curls are as neat as possible when you brush them out that there's no tangling and blah blah blah. This is what I mean when I mean the part is too wide, meaning that this cannot be one curl. It's too wide. It won't fit comfortably in the curler. Um, so you part the section in two, that's it. And you just curl both of them the same way. So for this top curl, this last curl at the top here, I am going to curl it differently. I'm going to curl it up with the curler upwards instead of downwards and actually the tail end of this, the hair, is going to go to your left. So that's how I'm going to curl this side. I'm going to curl this part going towards the left, just the top part here, the last curl. I didn't realize I forgot to curl the top part of this one until like right now. So I'm actually just gonna go in and show you guys that I, how I curled it because why not? So this side, I'm just doing the same exact way I curled the rest of this side. The right hand side, I just put the tail end to the left and curl down. So basically you just curl to the opposite direction. 
once the curls are all curled i let this sit for like i don't know like 10 to 15 minutes at least if it's your personal wig i would suggest doing this the day before so that the curls are fully set and will hold as long as possible the whole night they'll last as long as you need them to even the next day so the longer you let these curls sit in the pins the longer the more they'll cool down and they will set in the way that they need to be but if you don't have all that time with your client of course you just use a few minutes you'll need a big tooth comb a mid-sized comb and a fine tooth comb i start by taking the pins down on one side making sure that all the pins are out before i comb through anything just make sure you double check use your hands and double check to make sure all the pins are out on the side you're taking down before anything I take out all the pins except the front two curls. I just leave those for the very last just so that I can um, style the bottom part first and then I go in and I will set the top because that's the most important part. The reason you start with a big comb is because you don't want to fully brush the curls out. If you use a smaller comb, it'll brush the curls out too much um, in, and too much out of the style. The curls will still be there, but the style the shape of the style will change quite a bit so each comb is used for different reasons so what you see me doing is just basically taking the comb and using it like just once or twice to just make sure the hair goes around the way i want it to lay and then i take out the front and then with the front curls oh yeah i'm going in with the the second comb this comb kind of just makes the curls brush the curls out a little bit more than the first one did and this comb also just doesn't completely get rid of the way the curls are falling this is just the comb i use basically to guide of how i want the curls to fall so with with how with combing out these front curls let me tell you guys you have to comb it literally and brush it back comb it back okay not down you comb it back because if you comb it down you'll lose a curl just like i did i didn't really lose the curl but i i pulled it down too much and it, the curl kind of just falls too flat so now i'm gonna have to go back in with a curler which is normal by the way like typically there's a lot of stylists that don't show you that they do have to go back in with their curler to fix up curls sometimes because that's just what it is you just gotta sometimes you still have to go back in and recurl a little bit and still cut a little bit just to frame your client's face even frame your own face it wouldn't you'll see that sometimes you just gotta do it on your um when you do it on yourself you still need to fix certain things so I'm just going to put this back up for a couple seconds just so that it sets and then I'll pull it back down. So I'll show you what I mean by curling, um, combing the curls towards the back, like sweeping it to the back. See, like you pull it to the back. Because if you pull it down, it just won't sit the way you want it to. So you pull it to the back and then you kind of push it forward with your hand. And that's how you'll get the curl to lay the way you would like. I use this holding spray, it's called Kenra. It is like, the best one of the best holding sprays okay i use it so often in curls because it just shapes and holds the shape in like almost instantaneously it's, it's a quick dry so it dries really really fast like so if you spray it you can use it as a volumizer as well because it does have those properties in it so what a volumizer is for is just to give hair volume so if you want to like lift the hair up and spray it a bit it'll also give it volume but I'm using it to just basically shape um, the hair and help me keep it where I want it, the, all the pieces to stay. So it's another step that we uh, hairstylists do use. They do use some holding sprays to keep the shape in the front of the hair. That's another thing that I don't see that um, a lot of people show and that is very important to let you guys know that there is steps that are taking that keep the curls even longer, especially to frame the face. I took the spray where I sprayed it at the top of the closure there. I just used my hot comb just to give it a little lift 
and then I use the hot comb to flatten it down and then I put a clip there to hold it in that because I want it to be like a little bit of a curtain over to frame your client's face so that's why you saw me do that so now I'm just taking down this side yes I do it in sections it's easier this way for me as opposed to having everything down while I'm working on I work on one side at a time anyway so it's best I just leave the clips in as long as possible while I'm working on one side So what you see me doing, I'm just playing with the curls a little bit, combing them to the back, pulling them back to see how if they're falling the way I would like them to. I'm using the smaller comb to get more of a finer part, um, sorry, finer comb out. And then I just use the spray to hold the curls in place as to where I want them to be. And it's a light hold by the way, um, but it does give that hold in the front. So if the client moves their head or shakes their head, the curls revert back to where they were in the first place. close attention to where I put the spray and the clips so I spray the top to define the top area there give it a little bit of push up to give a little bit of volume and then I take my hot comb and put it down and then I use one of these clips the clips with the padding so it doesn't crease to hold it towards her face so this area once I remove the clips it will stay in this area right now it is a bit uneven on the left side and I'm noticing that so I'm just gonna go in and fix that part. And you're gonna see me doing that in a few moments. It's just one side is heavier, if you can notice. And sometimes it just takes you to step back and look so you can notice it and know how to fix it. So all I did was go back in with my curler and I'm just, it's, it's just a matter of either snipping or just relaying it, relaying the front properly so that it's even on both sides. Because most time that's all it's a matter of. It either needs to be snipped a little bit more to be uh, layered a little bit more. Or it just requires you to reshape it. So in this sense, it just required a little bit of... I had to recurl that top and then reshape it. And then wherever I spray, I just sprayed that to, to hold that little curtain area for a few seconds. The finest tooth comb I use for any little imperfections. Like it combs out the curls the most. And so for little small areas that I want to separate like all the way, I will use this fine tooth comb. Sometimes I use it to brush down the top as well. And that's basically what it's for. You don't want to comb it through. You don't want to use that fine tooth comb to comb out through the whole hair. It's usually just to touch up, um, define and touch up curls a little bit. You don't want to comb through the curls with that though. Then I go in with some LA Girl Pro Concealer, a little bit lighter than my client's skin. And that's it. And this is the final look guys. I hope you learned something today. If you did, let me know in the comment section if you'll be trying this technique out. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I do not mind ask, answering any questions. I answer all questions. Let me know if you guys have any thoughts, how this turned out or anything like that, or anything you'd like to add. I am open all the ways to suggestions. Also, let me know if there's any other tutorial like to see, what you would like to see. I will be open to doing it. Just give, let me know in the comment sections. If you guys enjoyed it today, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I will be, try my best to be more consistent with posting, learning videos, and other videos like that. So, 
Until next time, guys. Bye. Thank you.